Mr. Uh, Mr. Carmen will uh, come up to the witness table. Mr. Carmen, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Please be seated. <coughs> For the record, the chair would like to state that Mr. Carmen is appearing on a voluntary basis. We appreciate your cooperation. If you have any opening uh, statement, uh, you may proceed. Then we'll begin our questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have an opening statement, but uh, since this is the first time I've done this, I would like to answer the questions freely and candidly and from my memory uh, and be, have the opportunity to correct any testimony I give uh, when I see the transcript. Uh, if there are any specifics to which you don't have uh, the answers, we will be pleased to receive those uh, as a written submission within a week. Uh, Congressman Shays. I'd just like to establish for the record, do you have, uh, are, do, are you represented by counsel here? No, I have no attorney. Pardon me? Okay, I have no thanks. attorney. I wonder if I might ask you to pull the mic much closer to yes, you so we can hear you right. better. <coughs> Ms. Carmen, could you outline for the subcommittee your business and professional experience prior to joining uh, the General Services Administration? Uh, prior to that, I lived for uh, all my life in Manchester, New Hampshire. Was a businessman uh, there, had my own business, uh, was active in politics and in other civic uh, endeavors. Uh, had spent uh, five years on the Manchester Housing Authority as chairman, as vice chairman was the first uh, chairman for the uh, State Housing Authority in, in New Hampshire, and uh, I suppose an average citizen. Now, uh, how long were you GSA administrator? Approximately three years, a little less than three years. What a period was that? 81 to uh, 80, 86, I guess. 81 to 84. 81 to 84. Right. You left GSA when in 84? Um, in um, the September or October. In, in the fall of 84. Uh, these are the kind of questions I'm giving you from memory. If there's any difference in accuracy, I'd be glad to correct them, but in the we, fall. We understand right, that and, yeah. and, and we appreciate yeah. that. Now, what did you do after you left GSA? I went on to become ambassador to the UN, American ambassador to the UN in Geneva, Switzerland. Permanent and representative is a correct title. And how long were you in that position? Uh, two and a half to three years. Two and a half years. Came out in the, in the end of August of 1986. <coughs> when did you leave for Geneva? Um, in May of uh, 1984, I believe. That, does that work out? I'm not sure what, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure. It, it follows right after I left GSA. And since 86, you have been in the private sector. That's correct. Right. Um, I want to ask you about a project you were involved with as a developer in Arlington, Texas, yes. so-called Pebble Creek Project. Tell me, Ms. Carmen, how did you come to know about this project? Well, uh, it goes back actually to uh, when I was leaving G uh, GSA. Uh, I had got to know uh, what now is my partner, Josh. You'll have to pull the mic closer. To uh, I had gotten to know what is now my partner, Josh Wermus. Uh, he was with the Property Review, Review Board uh, uh, during the Reagan administration and had asked me to come and join him. He was a developer and a builder and involved in, in real estate. We had worked together, uh, like I say, under the Property Review Board, which meant that GSA, for instance, I had managed uh, uh, something under 10,000 buildings, uh, public property. Uh, we disposed of over a billion dollars of, uh, of real estate and other assets and, 
and we had worked together, and I think he was kind of com impressed with my background and knowledge and, and management skills. I decided at that time to go on to Europe, accept the ambassadorship, and not go into the private sector. When I came back uh, from Europe, uh, again, he had approached me to, uh, to go in with him and, to, uh, and we, do, we would uh, be involved in the private sector together. I, I considered it, and uh, at that time we looked at a number of opportunities which uh, were under considera consideration. One which came up was this particular Pebble Creek property that you're talking about, and that's the way it originates. Now, uh, did you do any other HUD-related project, or was Pebble Creek the only one? That's the only one. That's the only one. When did you first contact someone on the Arlington Housing Authority? Arlington, Texas is where the Pebble Beach project is located, uh, is that correct? My memory of this, and I think it's uh, reasonably accurate, but I don't have any um, uh, notes on it, is that it, uh, sometime in October or November, and I believe it's in the middle of November, uh, I went down to Arlington to look at the... November uh, of what? 1986. Yes. Went down to the... That went down to the uh, to uh, Texas to um, look at the property that we uh, uh, had under consideration to sit with the town of Arlington to, uh, to see what, whether they had any prospects of applying for uh, mod rehab. I believe that was the day that I met uh, uh, Joe Queenan. Uh, and I think we also went over to the HUD office that day and met the folks that were there. Did you contact the Arlington Housing Authority at that time? I met with them that day. The Housing Authority? Uh, I, yes. Do you recall whom you met? Uh, I think Charles Clausen and uh, Jerry uh, Strong. Did you tell them at that time that you're interested in uh, uh, developing this project? Uh, what uh, Joe Queenan came down with us that day and um, and Bruce Burgess, who was uh, uh, on the scene uh, manager type. And we went in to see if they had any interest in a mod rehab program uh, uh, and if they were interested in applying for, uh, for units. Did you indicate to them at that time that you were in a position to obtain units? Absolutely not. In fact, that came up under discussion, and uh, I know there's been some controversy of that in the newspaper, but uh, I had been in government for four or five years, and one of the things that were made that was plain was that uh, there were no guarantees. Uh, they had to apply. If they qualified and got them, we thought we had a project that could be very competitive. I understand that there were no guarantees, but is it your testimony that you did not indicate at that meeting that you were in a position to help them get units? Well, I, I don't, the term help them, uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, it is my testimony that not only did I not, uh, uh, that I did not say that, is that I think it was made plain at that discussion that uh, there were no guarantees on this at all, that, that uh, they had need, see, in our, in our survey of the community or what we had come up with is we had come up with a, a, a piece of property that we thought thought would be very competitive uh, if Arlington went out to uh, look for units. We knew there was need in the community, that uh, they had somewhere between 1,700 and 3,000 families that, uh, that were on their list, so that the, the area itself looked like it was something that uh, could justifiably receive units. A and uh, uh, I know the impl impl implications of your, of, of your question, uh, but uh, that isn't the fact. What is the implication of my question? That, that we can't, well, not the impl implication, the, the words you used, did you uh, say that you could get them those units? And I, the asked, answer, and I the asked you that. And the answer to that question is no. And the uh, answer to that question is no. no. That's right. To the best of your knowledge, um, whom did you contact at HUD, if anyone, concerning the Arlington, Texas project? Uh -huh. Are you uh, now talking at HUD Texas or HUD Washington? HUD Washington. All right, well, it's a matter of record. It's been the newspapers that I, that I went to see Sam Pierce. Uh, when did you see Sam well, Pierce? Well, let me, uh, if I can take a moment. Please and you, and, you, and you interrupt me if I'm, if I'm uh, avoid, uh, not answering the question as directly as you'd like. The, the process, as I reviewed it, of what went on in Texas, in uh, Arlington, uh, 
entering the process, getting the award, and us and uh, Pebble Creek finally being uh, offered to us as developer, takes place from October 1986 and really finalizes, I think, in August or September uh, of 1987. So that's the time frame that between the time we have discussed it with Arlington and have won it in. Uh, uh, have, have won the, the award from the town of Arlington. I went, as near as I can tell, that I, that I went to see Sam sometimes between uh, January and March, maybe, but sometime in the, in the, in the early, uh, early part of the year, 87. Uh, may I ask Excuse you? me, I should say the Secretary Pierce. I'm sorry. I should have said Secretary Pierce. I'm not uh, your best recollection is that you went to see Secretary Pierce during sometime during the first quarter of 1987. That's correct. What is your recollection about the arrangements that were made in setting up this appointment? Did you call him personally? Uh, I, no, uh, uh, it's, that's clear. Uh, I had my secretary call and uh, make the appointment with his secretary and uh, went over. There, was there any indication as to what the subject was that you intended to discuss with him? I don't think so. You merely asked your secretary to call Mr. Pierce's secretary to set up an appointment, which was done? Yes. You went to see Mr. Pierce alone? Yes. Was he alone? I don't recall. I, I, um, I know that uh, someone let us in, a woman let us in, and I know the meeting was very brief. It didn't last all that long. Somebody let us out. But I don't recall whether anybody else was in the room or not. When you say let us in and let us out, you mean somebody opened the door? Yes, but they came in and maybe said something to him. And, and then uh, when they came to get him, I, my, my recollection is that they said something also. But I don't, I don't know who it was. All right. Ms. Carmen, uh, approximately how long was your meeting with Secretary Pierce? Oh, I'd say uh, closer to 15 minutes than to, than to a half hour. Closer to 15 minutes than to a half hour. Right. Tell me, as best you recall, the substantive portion of your dialogue. What did you tell him and what did he tell you? Uh, I, uh, and I don't mean the social pleasantries. I understand. I understand. Um, uh, yeah. uh, the substance was clear. I went in to talk to him. I told him that uh, the town of Arlington, we thought, would be submitting a, uh, an application for units. That, uh, Did you at that time have a commitment from the town of Arlington that no, they would no. be? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't think so. I know, I know we didn't have a commitment from the town of Arlington. No, so you really me. couldn't have told him that the town of Arlington was going to submit an application because they didn't tell you that they would? Uh, I think what I said, uh, Mr. Chairman, was that I told him I thought that the town of Arlington would be sending in an application or could be sending in an application. Yeah. And I'm doing this from memory, and I don't quite have the time frame right, but I'm giving you the substance, and I think I'm giving you the information that you'd like to have. Uh, and, uh, and that... Uh, I told him that uh, I thought the community uh, had need. I thought the, the, uh, that the town of Arlington's application would have merit, and that, uh, that I hoped that it would get consideration from, uh, from the proper authorities or from, from whatever. Did you indicate to him that you were representing oh, the yeah, yeah. Or, Excuse me? Did you indicate to Secretary Pierce that you were representing the town of Arlington? No, I or think did I... did you indicate to him that you as a private developer were interested in developing this project which happens to be located in the town of Arlington? Uh, I wouldn't have indicated it to him. What I, what I more than likely told him is that, that we, we were hoping to compete for that project if the town of Arlington had received their, uh, their, their units. I would have been direct. Who had no business going to Sam Pierce to apply or to suggest that Arlington may apply. That is exactly the scandal we are investigating, which I'm sure you are fully cognizant of. The job of application had nothing to do with you, according to the way the program was set up. You went there because the program was being abused and misused by becoming developer-driven as clearly this application was. So let me go back to your meeting. Can I respond to that statement? You surely may. I, I think I had every right in the world to be there, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, I, I, th I think that the program was designed to have Arlington compete but was not intended to, to exclude people who are interested in getting into those projects from going anywhere they want. We have access to our own government. I have access to the Secretary of, of HUD. I have access to anyone I want. Every American citizen has. Yeah, the problem is that not every American citizen can call up the Secretary of HUD and get an instantaneous appointment. So don't be so self-righteous about every American citizen having this right. The whole point is that it is people like you and Jim Watt who took advantage of your influence and your personal knowledge of these people that perverted and undermined this program. So if I were in your position, I would be a lot less self-righteous than you seem to be. May I answer that? Yes, you may. Uh, I don't think that uh, self-righteousness is, is exclusively at this end of the table, well, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, let, me go, let me go on further. I, when I was head of GSA, I saw every single person who wanted to see me. Many were ordinary citizens, many were influential citizens. Most of them were congressmen who came to me with the same kind of requests you're, you're talking about what I came to Secretary of, of, of HUD with. Uh, I think the, I could go on at some length, I don't mean to personalize this thing at all, I think there were wrong, things wrong with HUD. I have some uh, knowledge of, 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 the, of the public policy area of HUD. Uh, I think that access is not one of the problems because if we stop people from even ha access, whether they're influential people, whether they're groups of people, whether they're special interest groups, whether they're lobbyists, if we stop that kind of access, we have nothing but the bureaucracy and the Congress to depend on executing our programs. I should think you would want to increase the access, not decrease it. And I think the comparison of me to Jim Watt is very unfortunate, and, 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 and I consider Jim Watt a, a, a friend of mine, but uh, we had a good program. We did it right. We, 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 we have seven or eight hundred uh, uh, poor people living in that project in a needy community. We'll, we'll get to that, Mr. All right. I, I, just, I just think that I, 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 I'm sorry for the outburst. I, I, I want to be cooperative. Well, let me... Uh, correct you a bit. How many employees did GSA have when you had at that agency? 38,000. 38,000? 38, 27 when I left. I'm sorry? 27 when I left. W what's the, the suggestion there? Just that I did a good job. Or would you have done a better job had you eliminated another 15,000 people? Then you would have done an even better job? Uh, that isn't the sole criteria, but that is one of the criteria. So as an agency in the private or public sector cuts back on its staff, uh, it, uh, it, it is improved? It can be. Uh, it can it's my be. experience at GSA. You assume that it is? No, I think that's a limiting question. I think that's one of the, one of the criteria for improvement. Mm -hmm. So the Defense Department would move from 3 million to 1 million people, you'd, you'd say that's a wonderful move. I think you can make an enormous case for a cutback in the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. How about IBM? Uh, they've already found that to be true. I'm sorry? They've already found that to be true. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I suspect... Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want, uh, to, uh, Mr. To the, Chairman, to, to, to the to, main theme. By the way, I don't want you to think that I went to GSA as some kind of. Uh, 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 no one was fired at GSA. We did it through attrition. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying that, uh, by the way, one of the things that came up early on in, I, in uh, GSA is one of the things you're struggling with now in the use of the IG, for instance. Uh, most people gave me pretty good grades at GSA, as a matter of fact, both from the right and the left in the three years I was there. And when I took it over, the people forget how quickly uh, GSA was sort of the hut at that time in 1980, so that uh, there were plenty of problems. But one of the, uh, uh, I mean, I'd love to be in a position to talk about housing and management, but I know that's not the purpose I'm here today. But one of the things we found early on is, is how to use the IG to correct our problems rather than to, uh, to let them linger and, and fester and develop uh, as it appears it has here, so that uh, you would find in my track record a, a great respect for the IG and a, a, very, a very quick willingness to seize on what he found and correct it. Well, I'm very glad you consider yourself the Jack Kemp of GSA, but uh, 
Uh, well, we, we, we will have to look at that record. I, I am not sufficiently familiar. I want, to, I want to come back to several of your observations. You suggested that uh, we should want to increase access to public officials rather than decrease them. Is that correct? Is that what you said? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I don't agree with you. I think we would want to equalize access to public officials because what we have seen in, in, in the Pierce administration, that people like you and James Watt and Carla Hills and others had very ready access to, to, to Pierce, uh, but vast numbers of other people didn't. As a matter of fact, that's why they hired people like James Watt. We had a developer, very able, intelligent woman testify under oath that her phone calls were not returned. She hired what to have the phone calls returned. So the condition that we describe at HUD during the course of these uh, 20 hearings is a disgraceful pattern of influence peddling of people who are politically well connected having access but others not having access and people who are politically well connected having their programs funded just as you had your program funded while far more worthy programs went unfunded. Let me also uh, return to your comment which uh, I've heard from others that uh, uh, the attempt by members of Congress to advocate projects in their own constituencies is analogous to the influence peddling and the self-serving promotion of projects such as yours. You weren't advocating a project because you were a citizen of Arlington, Texas. You advocated that project because that project would bring you great profits about which we are going to be talking in a few minutes. So don't, uh, don't attempt, uh, Mr. Carmen, because you will not succeed in drawing the phony analogy between a James Watt who gets $300,000 for a few phone calls to use his influence to get a project for a developer in a state where James Watt is not living, and the attempt by a Republican or Democratic member of Congress to advocate a project in his own constituency. These are totally different things. These people, in the House at least, are called United States representatives. They represent their districts and their constituents. And it is their duty to fight for projects in their congressional districts. You were not elected to fight for Arlington, Texas. Were you a member of Congress representing Arlington, Texas at the time? No. No. You were interested in this project because you invested in this project. Isn't that true? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm here as a because you asked me to be here. That's right. Otherwise, we would have subpoenaed sure, you. I understand that. That's right. Yeah, uh, uh, but, but that's not the point. The point that I'm here, uh, I'm here to tell you whatever you ask me. That's right. Uh, uh, and would, without being subpoenaed. Uh, I know I have no right, rights or, or, or to be offended, but as a, as, a, as a hearing forum, to sit where I sit and hear you with conclusions before I even have to testify and, and to draw, draw the, the, these, these images of, a, of, of how you perceive me without even any kind of... Uh, 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 trial, so to speak. Uh, I think it would be without that you're, you're the chairman, but it seems to me that, that uh, uh, it's, it's a little unfair. Now let me answer your question directly about the congressman. I, I said in my statement that I think everyone should have more access. Uh, uh, I wasn't saying that the congressman shouldn't have access. I think they have a duty to their constituents. I think, but everyone has a, a, has a, has a right to their, to their government. Uh, you're, you're a scholar on the American government and, and, and the Constitution and, and, and how we were organized. I, I think you do know what I'm trying to say. If you want to move from that subject to why I was in Texas, I was in Texas and, and I went into the project for two reasons. 
First reason was I wanted to make money. The second reason, when I looked at the project, it looked like it was worth doing because it did some good too. And I'm not trying to be sanctimonious. Both those, those reasons were there. When we went there to look as business people, and to do this as a business person, we were responding to the economic incentives that's built into the legislation. I understand the point that, that's been made here, and you make correctly in a way, but I guess it hurts me to hear it overemphasized, is, is that it, are, are these projects done in, 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 a, in such a way, and were they influenced in such a way that was improper? And I understand that, and I understand where you're coming from. I'm simply telling you that they're trying to say that, that we didn't do anything wrong, either legally or morally, and if there are others that have done those kind of things here, um, I don't want to be in the same barrel. Well, M M Mr. Car uh, Carmen, you will have every opportunity to present your case, all right. as all other witnesses do. What did Secretary Pierce respond to you when you made the pitch for your project? Uh, there was no response. He neither said yes or no, but because I only asked him to, to, to take it under advisement, and my intention at that hearing, and I know this is a little hard to believe, was to make sure that it received fair consideration. I, in fact, today we're talking about uh, 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 discretionary funding and political influence. Uh, uh, I never knew whether there was competition for this project or, or for the allocation of this project or not within the system. I assume that there was. Mr. Carmen, uh, I have here a chronology of this project. Mm -hmm. This project was funded, the decision to fund this project was made, and I'm going to send you a document. One month before the Arlington Housing Authority ever applied for this project. I want you to read the document I'm giving you first before you answer the question. Okay. Yeah, there. We start with the members. Always. Mm hmm Yes, I read it. All right. <clears throat> this is a document dated March 4, 1987. U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Stationery. Memorandum for Deborah Gordine, Executive Assistant to the Secretary. J. Michael Dorsey, Assistant Secretary for Public Indian Housing, who was filling in on this pseudo committee which was making the decisions. From Thomas Demery, Assistant Secretary for Housing, Federal Housing Commissioner. Subject, moderate rehabilitation funding decisions. This will confirm our funding decisions resulting from our moderate rehabilitation selection meeting on Monday, March 2, 1987. The committee resolved to fund the following public housing authority requests. Then he lists public housing authority requests from Birmingham, Alabama, Kinston, North Carolina, Sumter, South Carolina, Tennessee Housing Development Agency, DC Government, Metro Dade, Illinois Development Authority. And then in handwriting, there is a remarkable addition plus 316 units for Texas Arlington. The date of this is March 4, confirming funding decisions of March 2. The Arlington Housing Authority, Mr. Carmen, the Arlington Housing Authority, Mr. Carmen, requests units on their HUD Section 8 MUD Rehab program on April 8, 1987. Would you care to give me now your interpretation of what to me is a remarkable chronological discrepancy? Uh, all I can tell you is what I have told you. This is the first time I've seen this, and I can tell you that, that after Arlington, uh, w after we knew that Arlington applied, 
which I think is in the first week of April. Is I'm it, sorry, I can't hear is you. Is that the time? You, is, uh, I think the first week in April is when Arlington applies. April 8. Yeah, around that time. Uh, we waited along with them to see if it was approved. So I didn't know it was approved. It is your testimony. That's correct. That you did not know that your discussion with Sam Pierce resulted in Sam Pierce directing either Deborah Dean or Tom Demery. These are the only two players in this memo. Mm -hmm. Dorsey was a supernumerary, just was there because they had to have three people on the pseudo committee. You don't think that after your meeting with Pierce, Pierce told either Demery or Dean or both, we're going to ask Demery because he's coming back. Mm -hmm. I hope that Pierce will testify and I hope that Dean will testify. I suspect what happened, and your testimony, Mr. Carmen, is that it didn't happen while you were with Mr. Pierce, right? That's correct. You don't know, you don't recall what he said? I recall that, that I, I had not asked him for a decision, and, and, and I recall that he had not given me one, that, 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 I, that it was essentially what I told you it was, and, and I'm going beyond that right now, Mr. Chairman. I'm telling you that this is the first time I've seen this document, and my memory of the, inf the, the unfolding weeks were that we waited uh, with Arlington uh, without knowledge of the award. But let me tell you what I think the scenario was. And you tell me whether this is correct or not and in what respects it is not correct. I believe the scenario went something like the following. You went in to see Sam Pierce. And you told Sam Pierce you're interested in this project. You want funding for these projects. You want units allocated to this project. I don't know what Sam Pierce told you, because I wasn't at that meeting. You don't recall what he told you. But whatever he told you, and I suspect he must have made some friendly statements he testified before us in May saying that he usually said we'll give it very careful consideration or other meaningless words to that effect. While you were in with him, he presumably didn't call in Deborah Dean, did he? I don't believe so. He did not call in Tom Demery? Uh, no. Did he call Deborah Dean or Tom Demery while you were there? Not that I can recall. So to the best of your recollection, you had a meeting with him alone? Uh, I, as I started this, I, I was I've been trying to recall whether there was a staffer in the room or not. I don't believe so. And he didn't call either of these people? No. Okay. Then presumably, since you testified that you saw him sometime in the first three months of 87, which is accurate, must have been either the first of March or sometime in February because on March the 2nd there is a funding decision. And the funding decision sort of has some paperwork behind it with respect to all the programs except yours. Everything is, everything is here on paper except yours which is handwritten in by Demery or I presume it's Demery's handwriting. And he says, plus 316 units for Texas, Arlington, Texas. Now one doesn't have to be much of an investigative journalist or reporter or lawyer to assume that somebody told Demery you also are going to fund 316 units for Mr. Carmen's project in Arlington, Texas. Is that a reasonable surmise on my part, Mr. Carmen? 
par partially, uh, and, and certainly it's reasonable in terms of uh, what I know. Uh, I, I don't know whether Arlington at this time is having any conversations with HUD. I don't know that uh, any of the staff people are working. I mean, I don't know if there's any paperwork in back of this list or not that's gone in at this time. Uh, Let me help you. Yeah. Arlington, Arlington submits its application on the 8th of April. Uh, but I assume you don't just submit an application, you're talking to someone. Well, you may be talking to someone. Not, not me, no. But someone may be talking to someone. Well, yeah, someone may always be talking to right. someone. But that's not how the units are allocated. No, I understand that. There is a long paper trail on this. And the Arlington Housing Authority needs to present the formal application, which then goes through channels, which ultimately reaches Washington. And then it is either approved or disapproved and gets on the list. That clearly did not happen. Arlington is not on this list. Arlington is an afterthought. It is an afterthought emanating directly and exclusively from your meeting with Sam Pierce. No, it, I, I won't concede that. Well, give me, give me. I, I cannot give you anything, but between whatever the date this is, March 4th, Yes. And, and whatever visit I had with Sam, which could have been uh, anywhere from the tail end of January, I think, on, um, probably closer to the tail end of January, 1st of February. But um, between then and March 4th, what I'm simply telling you, that I had no involvement in that time, so I can't tell you whether this comes from that, but I don't know you whether... You are the only one who had, a, who, who had the... I, I don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know whether Arlington is now starting to talk to HUD people and HUD people are talking to Washington and, and, and somebody's saying they have a pretty good project coming, let's put 300 units aside from. I mean, I, I, I'm not, uh, by the way, I, I'm not suggesting that, that uh, the path you're following uh, um, doesn't look reasonable. I'm just simply saying that uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, well, Ms. Ms. I'm not Carmen. there. I do need to remind you you are under oath because I want to give you one more piece of information. Right. This document is dated March 4. Is that correct? <coughs> On March 23, the executive assistant to Tom Demery instructs the funding officer to fund 316 units for Arlington, Texas. There is no submission at this point yet from the housing authority. On April 1, an attorney who I presume is related to you, daughter maybe, an attorney by the name of Melinda Carmen sends a letter to the Director of Community Development and closing sample mod rehab application material that could be submitted to HUD. So on April 1, the Arlington people are getting papers showing them how to do this. And on April 8, the Arlington Housing Authority writes to Tom Demery requesting the units. Now there is one other document which I believe you have now. And this is a memo before Arlington submits the application from Deborah Dean to Pierce. The memo says, Brooke and Carmen are set. Mm -hmm. This relates to, obviously, a couple of commitments made by Mr. Pierce to you and Mr. Brooke on two projects. So the documentation is clear. In, in early March, there is a funding meeting. In the last moment, the Arlington project is, is thrown into this mix. Matter of fact, it must have been so hasty that they didn't even bother to retype the original memo. They could have typed the original memo <coughs> over 
at least put down the name Arlington, Texas in a proper form. But they didn't do that. They certainly had no documentation from Arlington, Texas. Uh, whoever um, Melinda Carmen is sent the sample application material to Arlington, Texas on April 1, by which time the funding decision is over. The funding decision is finished. Now you're saying, and I believe you, sir, that these are the first times you see these documents. Is that correct? That's correct. Now being a very intelligent and very successful person, please give me your interpretation of these documents. What do they reveal about the decision-making process of Mr. Pierce's role in response to your request? Well, like, like uh, I think I've said from the start, we, we were working with the town of Arlington right back from the beginning, so I think that there's probably a lot of correspondence or conversation going back on, on and I'm sure Joe Qu Queenan at the time is working with them in terms of assisting their application, so I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that there's mail or, or, or calls going back there. I think the point that you make about... No, no, Meli who is Melinda Carmen? She's my daughter. She's an attorney. She's an attorney. She's an attorney. Partner in, in Muss and Carmen, right, Carmen and, and Muss, yeah. And I suspect Miss Carmen, your attorney, was asked by someone, perhaps you, to send the proper forms to Arlington so they know how to apply. Uh, perhaps by Joe Queenan or by someone working someone. on their project. Right. Yeah, right. And that is done on April 1. It might even have been done before. But it wasn't. Uh, it was done on April I, 1. I understand that. Uh, I, I, I don't get the point of that particular question. I do get the well, point. The, well, I, let I, me I, do, I do get the point. Or I, well, let me, I, want to, I want to be sure you get every point. Yeah. The funding decision is made on March 2. It is made at a meeting attended by Demery, Dean, and Dorsey. They act on housing authority applications and on your application, which is not a housing authority application. Your application is a handwritten afterthought that the rational mind must conclude came about because you and Pierce had a meeting. And since nothing happened during the course of that meeting, subsequent to that meeting, Pierce directed Dean or Demery to fund your project. Well, I'm looking at this a little closer now, and perhaps I should have been more cautious with Please it. Please do. Uh, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, uh, am I misinterpreting it, what it says? It says rapid reply for those something 316 units for Texas and rapid uh, reply is a form they use and what what the handwritten note says rapid reply for these meaning the uh, ones listed uh, plus uh, 316 units for Texas well, Wellington Texas well I don't uh, that you may be correct but that may be also just calling attention to those 316 units and saying when when the request comes in uh, reply rapidly I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it for the first time, but uh, I don't see why I have to assume that the typewritten part, which, which, re, which refers to the list of, of, of units, is the, same as, uh, is the same as that particular uh, note. Well, I tell you why I, I mean, infer I'm, I'm that. Not I tell you why I infer that. There is a reason for my inferring that. Yeah. It says, rapid reply for these plus 316 units for Texas, mm -hmm. which to the rational mind would suggest that in addition to the funding decisions involving Birmingham, etc., etc., there was a funding decision made with respect to your project. Well, I don't think, uh, I know where you're coming from on this, and I think it'd be fair. I am not coming from any place, uh, Mr. Carmen. You went to Pierce. Certainly. And Pierce gave you the units. 
Well, uh, they didn't give us the units at all. They gave the town of Arlington the units. No, the Arlington hadn't yet applied. Uh, and no units had gone anywhere yet either. That's right. They just made the decision to give it to Arlington before they even apply. Well, uh, then I suppose you would say that the, you had to wait to find out whether when the town of Arlington's uh, application came in. On a April 8th. You know, what if it wasn't adequate or, what, or they didn't qualify or, or, or some other uh, uh, sure uh, uh, problem existed? I'll be glad to you. Mr. Kerman, I don't think you quite understand the full impact of what these documents uh, reflect. Nowhere else during the thousands of man hours of our staff and the members plowing through these applications and plowing through the paperwork trying to understand what has happened at Hood. No place else can we find, to my knowledge, had any money, any mention of a grant application been approved, even informally, before at least an application was in hand, officially no, from the, I, I let, me, let me finish please, from the housing authority of the, of the uh, town or city involved, no place else did this occur. And I think what the chairman is driving, trying to drive at, we're trying to understand, although you may not be able to shed light on this, but particularly trying to understand why this project moved at all before an application was made. Am I That's correct, correct, Mr. Chairman? I think you ought to address yourself that particularly, if you can't I, add any light. I can't tell you any reason except that one visit. Mr. Mr. Well, of course. Mr. Of course. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'll be delighted to yield to my colleague. I just want to uh, make one more quick point. In the second memo I sent down to you, uh, Deborah Dean discusses a variety of things, uh, half a dozen items, uh, reports to Secretary Pierce. And the last item says, Mod Rehab, Brooke and Carmen are set. She doesn't say Arlington, Texas is set. She says Carmen is set. Mm -hmm. Now, unless that community was redesignated Carmen, what is meant by this notation is that your, your deal is approved. It's set. Mm -hmm. And Deborah Dean reports this to her boss, Sam Pierce, who either told her or told Demery to set it. Mm -hmm. And as a good underling, she says, aye, aye, sir, it's set. Congressman uh, Lukens. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I want to yield to Congressman uh, Shays. Thank you. I just, just for the, and, and you may not know the term, but I'm getting a little uneasy with our term rapid reply. Rapid reply is what's required before the um, HUD central office can allocate units to the region, which is a 185 form, and then the 185.1 goes to the local region. So when we're talking about rapid reply for these plus the 360 units for Texas, it means very simply that Hunter Cushing had to sign off to Tom Demery in a rapid reply I that see. these units would be allocated. I see. Um, I, I just want that. Yeah, I, I misunderstood that. I thank my colleague, Congressman Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Carmen, let me go over s the chronology a little bit. First of all, rapid reply, if I'm not mistaken, is an actual form. They have a form uh, within the uh, department itself, of which we've seen several, and they just filled out it, but it requires urgent action. And it's called rapid reply. What he's talking about there is a technical response, but the urgency is very unusual. We don't see this very often. But I just want you to understand uh, the frame of reference and the perspective we're gaining from these hearings that some things happen that perhaps shouldn't have happened at all and should not happen at least so quickly, all right? I want to go back over your involvement. You became aware of the project from whom again? Mr. Muss? Uh, Mr. Uh, not so much the project. We came up with a, a uh, he came up with a piece of property that was suitable for a project. And this property? This, this what's, what's called Pebble Creek now. A and uh, uh, that was, uh, s seemed to be suitable for a uh, mod rehab program. And, and, uh, and you know through my, Mr. Muss through your daughter who is an attorney. No, I know Mr. Or no. Or you uh, knew him before? I knew him before, yeah. All right, so he's a long time friend. Um, in Washington terms. Have you ever done any business dealings with him before? Uh, no, no, except, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, we had done some uh, consulting together and some uh, private sector work. 
but no housing projects? No, not. Now let me jump quickly. How much money did you and Mr. Muss, uh, in gross terms and then net, make from this project? Well, we, uh, that's going to be a long, complicated answer when we get to that because actually the project isn't, isn't closed up yet and uh, we don't know whether we're really going to make money or lose money at this point in time. So Do that, you have uh, money invested? Uh, we have, uh, right now, we would be uh, exposed to uh, several millions of dollars, as a matter of fact, and have in, uh, have in uh, considerable amount of money. Let me, let me go through that uh, yeah. specifically. When I said you, I did not mean the collective you, but do you personally have money involved except from the corporation? No, the corporations are invested in it. We're not. So you and Mr. Muss have money at risk, but it's through the corporation That's GCJM. Correct. That's correct. And, GCJM? And, the, and the limited partnership, I think, yeah. It's a limited partnership, yeah. not a corporation. All right. Thank you. GCJM was set up specifically for the Arlington, Texas project. Correct. When was it incorporated? Uh, I don't have notes in oh, front I'm sorry, of me, when was the but, but my, my, my guess that it will run, it will correspond to the uh, uh, to the time frame, so probably sometime in early 87, probably June or July. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to furnish the committee with the precise date. I'll be glad to do that. That, the, or that you were organized as a partnership. Your testimony, and I want to try and summarize this best I can, committee spends long hours in this and sometimes we go over the same ground, but your testimony essentially is that while the project may have been speeded up unfairly, it was not of your doing. You had no knowledge of the rapid reply concept or the urgent, you know, the rapid response to your request personally of Secretary Pierce. Is that your That's testimony? That's correct. And you were not aware of the fact that your lawyer, who happened to be your attorney, uh, had mailed Oh, I, oh, I might let be. Me oh, excuse me. me excuse me. I'm kind of anxious right now. You were you were unaware of the fact, apparently, that your attorney, who happens to be your daughter, had made had sent the documentation to be uh, filled in by the PHA in Arlington after the funding had actually been okayed through a series of internal memos by HUD. No, I'm not aware of that. No, if I can just uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't separate that. I am aware that we are working with with Joe. Uh, Queenan uh, and the Arlington uh, um, Authority on helping them file their applications and so forth. So I don't, I don't know of any specific papers, but I would not be surprised that the conversation was going back and forth, so forth. As far as any action moving forward on the basis of us knowing about the award, I certainly didn't know that. Now you went to Texas, you said in November of '86, latter part of '86, right, to look at the land, the property. We looked at the property. We met with the Arlington uh, Housing Authority. And at that time, you met uh, uh, the two Housing Authority people, Mr. Strong, Mr. Clausen. I met Joe Queenan at that time. That's right. I met all the. And you folks. met Queenan at the same time. Yes. Uh, did you know you did not know of Mike Queenan before? Uh, I don't believe so. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I'd never met him before, but I did. I didn't. Uh, I You're knew. You're generally of him. aware of him, but you never met. I him. knew of him, right? Did you? Did he go down there also? For the same purpose yes. and on the same trip. Yes. Then you would too. Would you please tell me who all was included in that trip to Arlington, Texas, in late '86? Who was? Um, from memory again, my daughter, myself. Down there, we met Joe Queenan, uh, Bruce Burgess, and the two housing authority members. I think. From Arlington. Arlington, yeah. All right. Who knew the Arlington? Housing, the AHA, Arlington Housing Authority figures, when you arrived there, who made the introductions? Uh, I think we were all meeting them for the first time. Now, I'm not sure whether we had made a trip earlier or not, but I don't think so. I think it was the first time we were meeting each other. Was your limited partnership in existence at that time? No. To the best of your knowledge? I don't think so, to the best of my knowledge, no. The funding okay came through March 2nd, a memo dated March 4, formalized in a memo that it was all set on April 7th. Up until that time, the Arlington Housing Authority had not requested any official action. Was there hesitancy or resistance by individuals, individually or collectively in the AHA, to your proposal, group proposal, for a, a HUD project? At the PHA level? At the local level? At Arlington. No, in the discussion which I sat in with, uh, there was... Uh, a discussion on it that was both positive and negative. They had some reservations about it. They didn't know a lot about the the, pro the uh, program. 
Uh, they had other reservations about it. They had a long waiting list they wanted to serve. So there was what I would call from my housing authority days um, a, a, a very um, informative discussion on it. Well, for your information, in, um, on the 22nd of June in Washington Post was an article in which it quotes Charles Clawson, executive director for the Arlington Housing Authority. He referred to as PHA and I referred to as AHA. Said that Carmen brought the Mod Rehab program to our attention and did a lot of pushing and shoving to get us any units at all. Would you comment on that, please? Well, um, Congressman, I think you know me, uh, and uh, I don't push and shove anyway. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that discussion that day was very low keyed. Uh, it was really uh, um, just informative. Um, I remember that uh, Clausen had some reservations about that type of um, development. Uh, uh, Jerry Strong had some reservations about it. They also had a great deal of discussion about the problem they had, that they had these folks that had no place to live and, and, and that uh, this might be the best solution. So there, it, was a, it, was a plus, it was a plus and minus kind of conversation. You know now who Mr. Anthony Arangio is. I, I didn't know, but I saw that story. Well, he was a member of the five-member yeah, AHA. He's quoting the same article. They're saying, we didn't like it, but we voted for it. Can you tell me what objections they had and what they were basing them on? Uh, I don't know what, uh, now you've moved from the discussion which, uh, uh, which we had in, in November to when they're voting sometimes, I think, in July, is that right? Whenever that vote takes Probably. place in July. And I don't know, I didn't follow up on what their discussion was. I know it was a close vote. It was three to two, so I know it was a close vote. How many times did you visit Arlington? Uh, I've probably gone down there uh, between three and six times over the two and a half year period. Was that, uh, were all those visits uh, primarily before the granting of the money? Uh, I don't recall going back to Arlington uh, probably until after the, uh, uh, till after September of 87, but I may have. Well, apparently the AHA basically, some members were basically opposed to the most public housing. Is that correct? Is that a fair statement? Yeah, you always, um, uh, at least not my experience has been, uh, public housing is always a problem, but it's a need. Did you have competition for that project? Yes. Was it, was it really tough competition? Was it simply a surface uh, competition? I don't think you can call a three to two vote anything but tough competition. But uh, I didn't mean the vote of the AHA itself, but was there outside competition uh, for that money? Oh, I don't, I'm not aware of that. I think what bothers, I know what bothers me. I cannot speak for the members of the committee. What bothers me is apparently in most of the instances, all but one that I can think of offhand, have come before this subcommittee. People circumvented the local communities and made these decisions at a higher level. And look, it's almost as you look for a place to put the money, rather than looking for a place and then going out and get the money to, to suit that locale's needs. While you want a three, by two, three to two vote, which is a close vote, it just seems to me that it's an example of where the housing authority and the communities weren't really aware of a lot of this mod rehab money, made no drive for it, and only once they were convinced by outside developers did they really move. And that's one of the things we're dealing with here, Mr. Carmen, mm -hmm. is that, as the chairman said, someone else I think today, the program seemed to be developer-driven, not need-driven. If you had to do this over again, would you do it any differently? Well, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't do it at all. Uh, 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 it, um, again, if you had to do it over again, would uh, you no, do it differently no, I, now? I've, I've got to tell you, uh, um, uh, as I'm sure you're, you're all aware of, uh, this is not a happy experience. It, uh, it isn't worth the profit, although a lot of people would say the sums are very big. Uh, I did go into this because I thought it was a chance to make money and to do some good, as hard as that is to believe. I, as head of GSA, for instance, I'm, I'm a little uh, taken back by the chairman's information which he gave me because I, as a head of GSA, many times had people make requests uh, come to me, as I said. I knew how to handle them properly and did handle them properly. Uh, and um, I think we had a project that was merit, that, was, that we could have won on merit. 
I did think that I did go to see Sam Pierce and would have gone wherever I thought was appropriate because I do know you're in a competition for these things and we have a right to compete for them. But I, I, uh, I'm unhappy with what I've seen and, and, uh, and wish I had not, and wish I'd not seen this. Would you accept the general categorization by the uh, chairman, I think, that basically most people could not get in to see the secretary that quickly and apparently that convincingly. Is, is, that, is that a subject of any concern to you? I, I, I'm a, it may not have sounded earlier, I'm in almost complete agreement with the chairman on what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, uh, the, the, the public policy of housing is something I'm fascinated by, and I don't think it's been done right. I, I don't think it's that the executive branch is the sole uh, uh, guilty party on the, on the housing programs. Uh, I know they are developer-driven. I'm not talking about this specific. My years on the, on the Housing Authority in New Hampshire, that they were driven by, by, by the... We used to, it was a common knowledge that, that, that in order to get enough housing for people, you had to get contractors and developers and other people interested in it. We knew that right along. That, that, uh, and, and to me, uh, the government has moved uh, in recognition of this by building these incentives into it. Uh, I, and, I, and I recognize the process that's, uh, that's um, the discretionary part of this process that, that, not, that appears to be unfair. I, I, I will tell you this, you know, I also did the, tra the, tra the HUD transition uh, in 1980, uh, which I guess went from about November to January 20th, and, and, uh, and my memory of that was that whatever discretionary funds were in the, uh, left in the Carter administration, the final uh, days of it, were completely emptied out. Uh, so that, uh, I mean, they used up the funds there. Uh, in fact, if, um, if uh, I might... Um, no, I'm just, I just want to deal with this subject that, that I, don't, I don't approve of what I've been shown today. Okay, I don't, my point was I think I had a right to go to see Mr. Pierce if I, if I had access or anybody else. And I, and I really mean that and I've said it before. How that, that visit of mine is treated is something that really is not in my control. All right. In all it's fairness to the gentleman, I must say what I know of his tenure at GSA, what he's telling me uh, rings true. Yeah. That uh, it was run fairly, it was run firmly, and while I think everyone would not agree with the uh, just the cuts themselves being beneficial to the administration of any um, government. I also concur in the philosophic approach that it isn't always uh, uh, better government to have so much of it. By the same token, I hope you do not miss the point of today's hearings and the thousands of hours that we've now had in investigation and hearings, and it is simply this, that while I am in awe of the gentleman's ability to move government at all, but with such speed as you were able to do in HUD, I, I am really struck by that. Many others could get a phone call, but the action was forthcoming that phone call or from physical contact uh, was much more slow in coming. And I think we're dumbfounded, at least I am, as to how we could have funding approved without you know, the formal application in hand from the local requesting authority. And I have to tell you that that particular, that really does specifically concern me. And then, let me wrap up, Mr. Chairman, by simply saying this, that I have no doubt that hundreds of honest people honorably pursue a reasonable profit the way that this Congress has drafted the law and administrations, uh, plural, have issued regulations. And from your standpoint, assuming that we now do not really approve of this type of transaction. Can you tell us at any stage again what would have blocked you from seeing someone like Mr. Secretary Pierce or anyone else like that and moving through that maze of bureaucracy so quickly to a speedy decision without application? Is there anything there that would improve the system that would allow legitimate access from legitimate entrepreneurs but at least slow it down where the community had the the, uh, the principal was the principal motivator behind these applications rather than the developers. I, I think you uh, and I know from my, again going back to GSA and and some of the other things I've done, you have to have a process in place that stays in place. You you, you have to have uh, um, guidelines. You you have to have a uh, 
a system that frankly protects the management. I was always con I was always concerned that that when I met someone, for instance, I, I very rarely met someone like myself that came in to see Sam uh, without my uh, um, without uh, uh, my ethics officer there. I was very concerned. I think you know a little bit about the way I do things. So I, so I was very concerned that, that, that no one left my office thinking they had an advantage. Although I, but although I was also uh, uh, cognizant that everyone who came into my office ought to be attended to. So, so I, think, I, I think the record shows I, I understood that kind of balance. I, I'm not sure, that, uh, and, and uh, again, I don't want to drag this on longer than uh, that we want. I, I'm not concerned that, I think the housing situation in this country and our ability to provide it for not the term affordable house, housing, which normally is addressed to, I think, more middle class or, or a little less than middle class uh, people. I, I think we've consumed our time here. All I just right, want to right. add on this last quick question. You, you do believe, though, that the process to which you've been exposed today on this particular request, you feel that that was wrong? I'm surprised at it. Uh, and, if, it and, and, and I don't want to, to, to acknowledge that I've been involved in a process that was wrong. I'm simply saying that my part of the process was correct, but and I haven't seen the full picture that went on at HUD. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Congressman Weiss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Carmen, again, you, you, you volunteered that you were in charge of the transition of HUD yes. between the Carter and the Reagan administration? Is that uh, right? From uh, sometime in November to sometime in January. Right, and yep. you said that you, that uh, the discretionary funds were totally exhausted. I, I don't know that, was, that, uh, that it was discretionary funds in relationship to this type of program. All I know is I remember someone made, making the comment that was on the team that uh, everything had been emptied out that they could. Right, and then you come back uh, after four years of service and it was the GSA and an ambassadorship and you come back and you then s take advantage in essence of the uh, of the discretionary fund process is that correct I, 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 I don't want to concede that although I do concede the way it looks all right because what I'm telling you is, is that I, that I the way, it, the way it looks is that in fact you took advantage of the process is that right uh, no well you uh, I didn't take advantage of the process. But, but it looks that way to you. Well, that, you'll have to draw that conclusion. Well, you're the one who just said that you yeah, can well, see I'm, that the way it looks. What I'm saying is I'm thinking my way through it, and, I, and what, I'm, what I'm saying to you, uh, Congressman, is that uh, I did not take advantage of the process. Well, you said that you, were, you made very sure when you were the GSA administrator that when people left your office, they did not get the impression that they had they did not leave with the impression that they had gained an advantage by seeing you. Is that correct? That's correct. But you had gone to see Mr. Pierce, <coughs> in fact, to, to try to gain an advantage. Isn't that correct? No, no. That's what the uh, uh, point I was trying to make. I really went to see Sam Pierce to make sure that, the, that what I thought was going to be the processing of the Arlington, Texas property was considered. I mean, I thought it would be a winning project. I thought if it had the proper, if they had the proper uh, 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 procedures in place, but why would you, why would you have to have a personal intercession with Mr. Pierce if you had a winning project, uh, Congressman? I, I think uh, that that is what thousands of people do in Washington is to make sure that that someone in the systems, I think. Uh, uh, it, that things don't slip between the cracks, that they don't get overlooked, that you're competing with somebody else who maybe have an edge. Uh, I think this is a, a quite important part of uh, the openness of government, actually. Do you know whether, in fact, your competition for this project also saw Sam Pierce? I don't know if there was competition for the project. I would, not for the project. I think we're talking about funding now. I don't know if there was competition for funding. Well, you had said that there was a three to two vote, that there was, there no, was a no, competition. No, no, now we're, but that we're moving, I think, into a different, I'm not sure, but I think we're moving into a different category. The, 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 the competition for funds, yeah. which will go to Arlington, is one thing. Right. The competition which we had in Arlington in order to get those units was right. the second thing, yeah. But you had no way of knowing whether, in fact, there was or was not going to be competition. That's correct. And you wanted to make sure that, in fact, your application 
the application that, that you are generating would in fact receive favorable consideration. Is that right? No. No, I, want, I wanted to make sure it received the, 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 the consideration that it was due. And not my application, but the town of Arlington's application. Well, let, let, let's see if we can go back to the early chronology. When, when for the first time, did Mr. Uh, Muss uh, bring this project to your attention, the Pebble Creek project? I think October or November of 86. Okay, and what conversation did you have with him at that time? Basically, it was that, um, that there was this um, housing area, or housing units, right. that were available, that, uh, uh, that Arlington was a distressed area. Yeah. At, uh, uh, the uh, Chase had this piece of property, if I remember correctly, and it was going for less than it was worth, which made it valuable to, to lease right. out. And that it would fit the Maud Rehab program if, uh, if uh, Town of Arlington went for it and if they selected us. And so then what happened? Uh, then we went to visit with the uh, folks, and uh, then I went to visit with the folks in Arlington. And uh, who up to that point hadn't the foggiest interest in, in Pebble Creek, is that correct? Um, in Pebble Creek, I think it's correct. Okay. So then you met with them. That's not quite true, Congressman. They did have an interest in Pebble Creek because Pebble Creek was becoming a, a problem in their community. I don't remember whether it was all vacant or partially vacant, but uh, I remember them discussing the codes and things in the community. But not an Ahmad rehab program not with HUD, not no. at all? No. Correct. Okay. Now, somewhere along the line, uh, Mr. Keenan became part of, part of your group. Is that correct? Almost immediately. When, when was that? What, the meeting that I, the original meeting that I had uh, in uh, Arlington in October or November, he was at. That's where I met him the first time. Well, now, how did he get to be a participant with you and Mr. Muss? He was, uh, he came aboard as uh, the person who was going to be or our mortgage banker, the person who knew the programs, the, the program technician. Did he reach out to you or did you reach out to him? Uh, I didn't reach out to him. I didn't know him. Uh, I think Josh knew him uh, uh, and uh, had set up that particular meeting. Mr. And Musk did, 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 did Mr. Muss tell you who Mr. Keenan was? Yes. Right. And then how did, did, when did your daughter become a party to this operation? Well, uh, the law firm became, uh, th this is a law firm of Carmen and Muss that, that she's a part yeah, of. Yeah, right. So it isn't, there are others in the law firm. There's two of them in the law firm, three of them, I believe, in the law firm. So I think they all worked on the, pro on the project. So I don't, they all became involved. Okay. And on, prior to your going to see Mr. Pierce, did you and or Mr. Muss or Mr. Keenan have a discussion about your going to see Mr. Pierce? Uh, I'm sure I discussed it with Josh. I don't know that if I, whether I discussed it with Mr. Queenan or not. I, I wasn't apt to discuss it with Mr. Queenan. After the first visit, I had uh, very few conversations with, uh, with Mr. Queenan. Well, when, when you had a conversation about it with Mr. Muss, what was that conversation about? What, wh what did he say to you? What did you say to him? I said to him that I'm going to see the secretary uh, uh, to uh, tell him about that the Ar Arlington proposal is coming in. Uh, and that uh, uh, that I don't want to, that I would like to see that it got the consideration that uh, that it ought to get, and that uh, if it has merit, I'd, we'd like to see them get the units. And Mr. Must said, "Lots of luck. Go ahead and do it." I don't know that uh, that was. I, I'd say it was. Uh, uh, we, we both were supportive of that. Okay. And after I, you had your meeting with Mr. Pierce. Did you have a conversation with Mr. Muss or Mr. Keenan about the, the meeting that you had with Mr. Pierce? Uh, I don't recall any, any conversations with, with Queenan. That doesn't mean I didn't have them, but I don't recall them, but I'm sure I discussed it with Mr. Muss. And what did you tell him? I told him exactly what I've told you. That I, that I met the secretary this afternoon. I told him about Arlington's uh, uh, request uh, 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 might be coming in and that uh, he listened to me. And did... did who then followed? What, what, what transpired between that conversation, uh, which had to take place prior to March 2nd, right? What, what, what's the closest date that you can approximate as to when that discussion with Mr. Pierce took place? I, I think it's end of January. Okay. Now, 
between, Jan between January, uh, the end of January, and April 1st, which is when uh, your daughter forwards papers to Arlington, the, the Housing Authority, uh, who's keeping on top of the situation at, with HUD? Uh, I don't know that anyone is, but I know that I'm not. Now, if anyone is, I would say that uh, uh, I would have assumed, which may have been a lot, that the, that, the, that, the, that the law firm and Joe Queenan are now working with the town of Arlington, helping them put together their, their application. You have, you have no, no dis further discussions about the project between the end of January and April 1st when your daughter forwards papers to Arlington. Well, the, lo the law firm does, and maybe it was under her signature, but, but uh, my, again, I'm going strictly from memory now, and I'm not trying to be evasive. I don't believe that I had any contact regarding this, regarding housing with HUD. No, not with HUD. Where, did, did you have any discussions with Mr. Muss uh, between the end of January and oh, April? Oh, sure, oh, excuse me, sure. And, and what, what were those conversations about? Uh, basically, uh, I think they were about uh, how the town of Arlington was coming on their application. Also at that time, I believe uh, we, we are uh, putting under, uh, getting the property, I don't know if option is the right word, but we're trying to get the property uh, uh, sewed up so that if the thing moves along, we will have it available and that type of thing forming a corporation in June, I think, and, and that type of thing. Words, we're making plans to move ahead with it. And all of this time, you're unaware of the fact, at, at least you're not told either by anybody at HUD or by Mr. Muss or, or anyone that, that in fact HUD has signed off on the application? No, no, uh, not at all. That's why these are, are quite surprising to me. Um, these documents, uh, uh, particularly the first one, is, is ver very surprising to me. Uh, I, um, uh, I don't even recall any unofficial rumblings like you hear in government when something is going to happen. I don't, kn I don't know whether that's the case or not, but my memory is that we were waiting along with Arlington to hear. Well, you'd be, you'd, when you look at some of the other documents, perhaps, who we'll, were we'll shown to you, you'd be surprised to note that after March 2nd or after March 4th, there are detailed memos and sign-offs from within the office of, of, uh, of the Secretary and, and, and the, at, at the Housing and Urban Development, so that there was a lot of attention being focused on this project. And yet you're telling us that, as far as you're concerned, neither you nor your partner or partners had any indication from HUD that in fact there had been a sign-off on this proposal. Um, that's what I'm telling you, and, and uh, uh, I don't think my memory is failing me to that degree, but uh, um, if, you to if, you, if you tell me uh, it was within a week or something, uh, Maybe there were rumors going around. I, I don't recall hearing them, but this, this uh, first memo you gave me is, is a real surprise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Congressman Rice. Congressman Shays. Mr. Carman, um, I have a few questions. I think we can go through it fairly quickly. Um, when did you first find out that funding had been approved for Pebble Creek? Uh, when did Arlington get their award? When did you know that they had... Um, yeah, but the funding we're talking about is, is when the town of Arlington received the... Is that the funding we're talking about? Well, yes. When did you know that the central office had approved the um, uh, Pebble Creek project? My memory is that it's in April. Um, and how did you find out? Uh, I thought that uh, we either heard that, they, that it uh, had been sent or that we had called down there and they had received it. I'm not sure whether we heard from Arlington or our office picked it up somewhere else. I would not have heard officially myself at all. Did you have anyone in, in, in HUD Central in Washington who said you've been funded? Not to me. To anybody else that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Um, how did you, um, you, you hired uh, Mr. Queenan as a consultant, that was his role? No, no, uh, Qu Mr. Queenan was, uh, my understanding is... Okay, let, if, if the answer is no, I'll just go with my next no, question. No, no. Did you hire any consultants? No. 
Um, so you not hired that I, no consultants? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. Okay. Were you, in a sense, the consultant? In other words... Um, no, I was a full investor and a developer in it. So as the developer, how much cash did you put into the Pebble Creek? Uh, well, we didn't put in uh, very much cash into it. Uh, we, we incorporated it, and the thing f flowed off its own cash flow. Well, that's important for me to know this. You, you yeah. basically put nothing into the project? None of your resources went into the project? Uh, just my, just my, uh, my guarantee, which is considerable. So... Um, uh, did anybody else put any money in this project? Uh, I think lines of credits were used, so our, so our guarantees were used to to uh, to support it. So, am I to assume that basically you you got money out of the tax credits to put into the project? Is that how you did it? What were your tax? What was the rent subsidy that you received? Uh, you no, know, we were trying to figure out how much was put in this project. None of us knew, and now I know why. <laughs> Nobody put any money in the project. Uh, um, <laughs> It doesn't really require, well, uh, that you're going to have to talk what, to. What was the rent subsidy? On. How much rent subsidy did you receive? The rent subsidy, if, if we separate the tax credits and the rent subsidy, yeah. uh, the project itself, on the basis of the information we're seeing, throws off no money. I mean, the, the, it's a very difficult project. Let me ask project. you this. What did the government give you in rent subsidies? Was it close to $28 million? It's close to um, a million five, I think, between a million five and a million eight a year. The contract runs for 15 years, which may come to that, and that's the figure that I've seen in the newspaper and the figure that, that computes out, but I don't, I don't think that that's a number that, that will remain through the life of the contract. I wouldn't be surprised if it was higher. Well, it troubles me that you don't know. I mean, it's your problem. No, I do know. Okay. I, I just told you what it was. No, it, it's, no it's, you haven't told me what the rent subsidy it's was. It's a million eight a year. Okay. 1.8? 1.8. Okay. It's, it's between five and six thousand dollars a unit. Yeah. Now, um, have you, um, have you, uh, and what was the tax credits? Tax credits, if the project is, when it's completed and closed, which it is not yet, would be approximately 3.2 million. Okay, now, um, and how much is your interest again? Uh, our, our benefits from the tax credits would, the partner's benefits would be approximately 2.4, and, and the tax credits would be worth to us individually about a million, uh, over a million a piece. Now, have, have any por portion of the tax credits uh, been received by you, the benefits? Uh, approximately two-thirds of the benefits have been received in terms of tax credits. So two-thirds of, of, of 2.4? About, about 800,000 a year, less uh, 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 maybe 150 or $200,000 a piece in, in, uh, in expenses and, and things that have remained in there, along with a third of it. The important part of this, I think, um, Congressman, is um, what, uh, what we're all finding out is that there is liabilities in the project that, that exceed the, the, uh, the tax credits which we've had. There are liabilities in terms of you have to keep the project going at least five years, for instance, in a limited partnership or the original partners are, 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 are um, responsible for the, um, the net losses on it, which can exceed $400,000. Uh, there is um, considerable liability with the with these um, in initial liability with, well, with these projects. Well, the one thing we are fairly clear about is you didn't put any money down, uh, and nor did your partner. And I uh, no, I don't know that uh, that we use mostly lines of credits. But my par my partner uh, may have funded. Uh, I want to be careful with numbers, but but seventy thousand, eighty thousand. What I, was I your know. What was your contribution to this project? Yeah, I mean, well, you seem to know very little about the project, uh, and, and yet, I mean, what, what, did you, I, I, what, what was your contribution? I think my contribution was the fact that I was going to be, uh, and have been actively engaged in, in, in the architecture of it, yeah. working with the architect, the social implications of the problem, which are extremely difficult down there. I, I've got to tell you, that's it, a... Is, is, is one of your contributions that you, in a sense, serve like uh, others did, you won, you got the funding for I it? I have a... Well, no. That, that, that I happen to think that anyone else could have done what I did. I mean, uh, no, my partner... Let me, say, let me just say to you, I had probably four different individuals, congressmen and others, come up to me and say, you are a very capable man, you are a very good and decent man, uh, and they were very interested to know about your presentation here. I had some a minor question to ask you, and then you proceeded to, to make just an outlandish statement that, you know, you were just like anyone else, uh, having access, and everyone should have access. And, you know, I cringe because I just assume we not go over this. But you, James Watt, and Carla Hills, former leaders of departments, 
had access to the secretary when others didn't have access to the secretary. And you can get uncomfortable by that, but you know, it would seem to me, and I'm not being self-righteous about it, it just seems to me that you would have been better off not even bringing it up and just say I had access that others didn't and I used my access and you're not like James Watt to the extent that you weren't a hypocrite, you didn't work against these programs and then try to cash in to my knowledge. I have no problem with the fact that you reduce GSA. If you got the same productivity with less employees, great, totally irrelevant. What's relevant to me is that you had access to Samuel Pierce and it is clear, and you know it's clear, um, as decent a man as you are, you know it's clear that you had impact because uh, basically the, the rapid reply which allocated this money, the 185 and all the others happened before there was really a project uh, being requested by the local people. So um, you had tremendous impact. My question to you is, you don't seem to know some things about the project that I would think someone, a developer like you, would know. And my question to you is, was one of your major contributions getting the project funded? I guess which, uh, and, and maybe I should apologize to the chairman if, that, if, if I was uh, that, that uh, strong. You don't need to apologize to anyone. Strong on the subject. I, I, um, I am sensitized, I think, to the fact that uh, uh, I know everyone doesn't have access to the secretary. A lot of people have access at different levels. And, right. and, and I guess I'm, uh, um, uh, and I was there to push the project, uh, the Arlington's project, and I guess I'm a little bit surprised at the, the way it went. Okay. And, I, and I'm a little bit... And that's uh, a valid point. Your and, point... And, and, and I'm a little bit uh, uh, uncomfortable with the position I find myself in. Okay. I think that's a fair comment to yeah. make. Um, what I'm inferring from your comment is that you, you had impact in a way that um, uh, others might not have had impact. Uh, you're clear that this process uh, uh, didn't work the way I assume you would have it work in any agency or organization you, you operate. Yeah, no. Okay. Now, but I want to be clear on this, um, because this rep there's another dimension here. Um, you know, I wonder about my federal government encouraging projects to be funded where the only thing individuals have to do is have extend a line of credit. Um, obviously, you have to have resources. But um, this project <coughs> didn't require some upfront cash on the part of any individuals. Is that correct or not? No, I, I think uh, I, I don't have the ex exact amounts because they were minimal, whatever. We, uh, we had to incorporate, we had to put some money in the corporation. But, but they, were they were minimal. They were minimal, okay. yeah. Uh, and but, you're uh, saying to me, and I, I'm sorry, you did say this, and I apologize, I didn't write it down. Your equity and in interest in this project was what? 50%. Okay, and your partners was 50%. Right. I'm sorry. Now, of that, you're saying there are tax credits of $2.4 million uh, that could accrue to you in a sh relatively short period of time. Uh, to the partnership. To the partnership point, of two people. Yeah, yeah, right. But basically, I'm, I'm using simple math. I'm just dividing and saying that you're getting $1.2 million out of this project from tax credits. That's correct. Okay. Um, that's, that's obviously significant. It's, it's higher than some have gotten. Um, would, um, have you, uh, how have, <coughs> is this project still owned by you? Uh, I, it, it is now a limited partnership. It always was a limited partner. When you sell the tax, cre tax credits, of course, you become uh, uh, a general partner, and the limited partnership owns the other 99 percent. And, and, uh, right, but ultimately it depends how you've structured the sale of this project. At, at, if you ever sell this, sell this project, what interest do you have in the project? One percent. Okay. You, you've arranged it so that when this project is sold 15 years from now or oh, 30 I, years? Oh, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. Who knows the answer to that question? Um, Mr. Musk would probably all know the answer to that question. Um, you were the motivator for this Could project? Could you please speak into the microphone? Uh, I can't yeah, hear okay. you. Was, Sorry. was your partner the motivator of this project or were you? Uh, as I, I, I think that, uh, I think we both were. The, uh, he, like I said, he, he brought it up initially. In okay. Term, uh, okay. Right. Yeah, so he basically was the initiator. And it seems to me what, what and, uh, and uh, if I'm being unfair to you, you have every right to say so. Uh, but it strikes me that your contribution primarily was to get this project funded, and you got 50% equity in a project that you had to put nothing down on. No, uh, 
May I answer that? Yeah. No, this is a, I, I don't see it that way, and, and, and uh, I can see how you would see it that way, because this is a 15-year contract. We are in the management of that contract. I had had years, like I, as I said, in, in both uh, HUD-related work and real estate work myself. We had to put the project together. He, he was a very strong financial part of, uh, part of this, this, this program. Um, I knew HUD, and I knew, uh, uh, certainly I was anxious to get into managing a project, or being, not managing, but being involved in a project which was very similar to the ones I had done at home in Manchester and that were government owned. So I think I, I had a lot to bring to it, much more than what you're suggesting I only brought to it. How much okay. did, how much did the, the building cost? Uh, four million. And, um, and how much did you put into it? In equity? Uh, into renovation. I'm uh, 4.1. I, I think the total mortgage is 8.1. Well, let's talk about the mortgage. Um, are you aware that the um, that the Inspector General did a report uh, this year on Benton Mortgage Company, and they basically came to the conclusion that um, uh, Benton Mortgage had inflated Pebble Creek's mortgage by two million dollars. Uh, which really manipulates the rents and the rent subsidy that you get. Are you aware of that criticism? Uh, I, I'm aware that, that there's a disagreement after the fact, not before, that the project was done in accordance with HUD regulations, HUD format. It was done, I think, on a, on a, on a what they call a major uh, mod rehab program. I think the IG's basis of less numbers is be that he suggests it should be done some other way. And, and, and uh, uh, that's where the difference in numbers comes, and whether it's a uh, major mod rehab or whether it's something less than that. Okay. Let me just conclude by just understanding this line of credit. Um, how much of this line of credit have you used uh, in the purchase of this property? We have uh, fully mortgaged... Uh, Again, this is a technical question I, that I'm going to answer to, that, and be glad to get to the exact facts. I believe we're fully mortgaged now, and that what we're awaiting is the a, is a final closing of the project in order to complete the tax credit uh, okay. transfer. So, so fully mortgaged would be $8.2 million. That's correct. Uh, of that $8.2 million, um, what, what in, and this line of credit, is this, what is the... What is the collateral in this line of credit? The collateral, it's a fully insured, uh, co-insured uh, uh, project. I think the... the is uh, the collateral the building itself? The building and the, and the improvements. So, correct me if I'm wrong. You basically uh, succeeded in getting uh, Central HUD to allocate a number of units for a project which you and your partner had to put nothing down on and that the collateral uh, for the line of credit was not your house or something else. It was simply uh, the project itself. Is that uh, correct? Uh, I don't think that's correct in the early stages. I think in the early stages you have to... Is it to correct now? Uh, when, when it's completed, when, when the final um, signing is over with, uh, then it will be, com will be correct. And, and, but in a sh very short period of time, you and your partner will be able to walk away with $2.4 million. Uh, not, uh, not before uh, uh, at least four years, I think, the program well, is. Well, you know, even if it's two or three years, but your return on your own equity, your own investment is zero, and your return is $2.4 million. If the project went under after you got your tax credit, what liability do you have to the project? Uh, if the project doesn't function, I think, for four years, uh, we have responsibilities, I think, to, the, uh, uh, to those who bought the tax credits. You have you what? Know, responsibilities back to those who bought the tax credits. Okay. There's some varying, deg varying so degrees. If you, get, if you can get it beyond two point, if you can get this project to go, according to your testimony, to the best of your knowledge, to four years, and you can keep it operating for four years without foreclosure, you, you can take away $2.4 million. You and your partner, you could literally walk away from the project. Well, um, I think the answer to that question is, is yes. I don't know that. Can, can I add sure, one sure. thing? Because, uh, as I said earlier, that I would, I would really like to discuss public housing in, in, in ways that, that interest me, which don't revolve this. One of the things that's apparent when you look at these programs after you get into them 
is that they're not good programs, in my opinion, that, that the doing of them is front-loaded, so that, that you, you, make, you make a profit when you do them, uh, when you put it through, and you're suggesting you can walk away with a with million dollars in this case, or, or, or some percentage of the tax credits, there is actually no incentives to keep these programs going. That, that's why I think you're, that HUD looks at so many failures. Uh, and that uh, when, when you asked me the question about $28 million uh, in um, rent subsidies over a 15-year period, I, I may not have been direct with you, and you may have thought I was less than knowledgeable on, on that. What was bothering me with that question was that, at least in this particular project, and, and again, it's a long answer, and I apologize for it, there are enormous social implications in, in, in the type of project it, it has, which I don't think the rent subsidies are adequate. I mean, they may be adequate to put a roof over people's heads, but they're not adequate to build the services that are necessary to keep these going. And what the, the answer I'm trying to get to you is that you build a program together that says, I guess what you're saying is correct. Uh, uh, Carmen, you want to go do a development, uh, you, you put it together, you, you, you do a decent job. I think everybody's agreed that we've done a good job on the project, we've done the best we know how, we've put it together, you, you sell it out as a limited partnership, you walk away with a profit, and then you look at the ongoing 12 or 15 years, and, and in my opinion, it, it doesn't have the economic incentive at that end of it to, to, for people to do a real good job. Yeah. Well, and that, and that's the problem. Yeah. I, I think that's very insightful, and you're speaking from first-hand knowledge. Um, the, really, the project, was it housing people at, bef, bef, when you bought the project, when you bought this? It, uh, Were again, there people living there? I think it was roughly empty. Now, I'm not absolutely sure of that. Plus, it was, it was deteriorating or it had deteriorated in such a state at, that the, the city of Arlington was concerned about it. Well, it's, this was not a substantial rehab. It was a moderate rehab, which means only two major... No, no. This no, was not a substantial no, it rehab. it was a substantial rehab. No, no. It, 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 by definition, it was a moderate rehab. No. <laughs> by definition, uh, we maintain, and I think, and again, Benton is the one in this, uh, well, Benton maintains and has maintained, I think, that it was a substantial rehab. Well, then, if it was a substantial rehab, you shouldn't have gotten funded, because we didn't, we eliminated the substantial rehab, if I'm in. Well, maybe no, I'm using the wrong term. Okay. But, right. Well, no, but, it, but you know. Um, let me just say to you that, that um, yeah, okay. It, it, it was, it's just to substantiate, it was Section 8 mod rehab yeah, units, right. and that's really what we've been discussing. Yeah. Um, it really, very candidly, the whole project was really a ripoff to the taxpayers um, because, and I know you wanted to do good, but it was. Um, you know, you had... You had over 200 units out of the 316 that are one bedroom. Isn't that correct? 190. You have 190 one bedroom units. So how does, how does a mother and a child live in those units? I, uh, the town of Arlington knew the composition of, 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 of the uh, property. But I think a mother and child can live under, under HUD regulations in a, in a one no, bedroom. No, I know they can, but you know, pretty, pretty pretty bad. Well, the appalling part of this, Congressman, is, is, is that we've had terrible uh, control problems in keeping m more than a mother and two or three children trying to get into those apartments. Well, no, exactly. We should, have, we should have spent money on moderate rehab on a project that had more than one bedroom. And we should have, it seems to me, have uh, uh, had a project where the developers were willing to risk some of their own capital. And um, we and you, should, you know, you're not suggesting that we did it in any way that wasn't legal, though. No, 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 no. no, no. no I mean, no. The, I mean we, we, the economic incentives in the program, I think, are exactly as we did it. Uh, uh, and, and I don't want you to leave the term, if I can help it, on the record that it was a ripoff in the sense that, that there are, you know, we have 325 single women with children in that project. We have only 35 husband and wives. We have, I think, something over 400 uh, children there. So there's about 800 people that without this project, I guess, wouldn't have any place to live. Now, if you say to no, me No, 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 wrong. Because what we should have done is take the $27 million of mod rehab and the $3.2 million of tax credits and given it to a more worthy project. That's what we should have done. And, and the sad thing is that um, whether you like the characterization or not, you... Uh, had influence with Samuel Pierce, and Samuel Pierce uh, 
evidently uh, uh, had influence with people around him and you were funded. Um, I, I, so I'm, it's almost so obvious, I don't think I need to drag it out. I, I've heard enough, I've heard enough in these entire hearings, I'm getting tired of hearing the repetition of it, uh, but this will go down as one of the more uh, finer Whitner, Whitman samplers that you've talked about in the past. And I thank you, sir, I really do. Thank you very much, Congressman Shays. I'd like to go back to several issues I was exploring, some new ones. Subsequent to that meeting with Mr. Pierce, did you have any other communication with him by telephone, by correspondence, or in person? Relating to this? this well, first relating to this item, and yeah, then... I don't... Uh, uh, no. That was the only contact you had with him. Relating to this Arlington project, right? Did you ever thank him for the units? Uh, I don't recall doing that, no. When you met Mr. Pierce, did you know Miss Dean? No. Uh, w w when I say no, I don't know whether I've met her at a reception or a party or something like that in... in, in, in uh, but you did not know her? I didn't know her, no. Did you at that time know Mr. Demery? I knew of Tom Demery. Um, I will tell you a, um, an interesting observation on that, because I'd, I'd heard of Tom, but I met Tom sometime later at a party. He came over to talk to me, and I had to ask him his name. I didn't know who I was talking to, so when I tell you how I knew him, I knew him by reputation and name, but not personally. Right, but... But I want to be sure that I have your testimony accurately, Mr. Carmen. At the time you lobbied Mr. Pierce for your project, you did not know Mr. Demery, and you did not know Miss Dean apart from conceivably having met her in some social context. Or politically or something of that right. nature. Yeah, right. But you at no time talked to either Mr. Demery or Mr. Dean or Ms. Dean concerning this project? Not that I can recall, no. Well, you would recall, wouldn't I you? I think I would. I mean, I you made a lot of money on it without investing a dime, so it's not that casual. So try to give straightforward answers. No, but it's two and a half years ago. And, and, That's and, right. And, and I, uh, I don't recall talking to him. So it is reasonable for the subcommittee to infer that the project was funded upon the direction of Secretary Pierce and not upon the initiative of either Ms. Dean, Mr. Demery. Well, I'm not going to give you, tell you how, what to infer, uh, certainly. Well, you did not talk to that's Ms. Correct. Dean about the project. That's you did correct. not talk to Mr. Demery about that's, the that's project. That's correct. But you did talk about the project to Mr. Pierce. That's correct. Benton Mortgage did the mortgage on this. That's correct. The Inspector General claims that they over-mortgaged it by $2 million. How did you get to Benton? Did you seek them out or did they seek you out? Uh, I think that uh, Joe Quentin, uh, Joe uh, Queenan and uh, perhaps Josh Muss knew Benton, but I think it may have come from Joe Queenan. Didn't they knew the company. And they may have sought us out. I'm not aware of that. Did you have any dealings with Benton? I met with him. Uh, when? Uh, before we uh, accepted, I guess, their, their um, offer of mortgage. To give them to the mortgage. Where was this meeting? I think it was in Washington uh, over breakfast or something like that. Mm -hmm. Who participated at the meeting? Uh, I don't remember the... Um, executive's name. It may have been Queen, but I'm not sure. But Josh would have been there. I would have been there and somebody from Ben. Are you aware of the fact that Benton Mortgage is suspended? I'm aware that they have uh, some problems and, and maybe... No, I didn't ask you whether you, they well, have some... Pro we all have problems. It's suspension the question I'm asking you, are you aware that HUD I'm, I'm aware has that suspended the them from the coinsurance program? I'm aware that they are um, uh, maybe suspended from the coinsurance program. I'm just having trouble with the language, that's all. I don't know if that's the term. Well, if you say it is, that's the term. 
Well, that is the term, but I'm happy to accept your characterization. All right. Are you aware that they are suspended? Yes. Does that give you concern? A lot of concern. Tell me the nature of those concerns. Right. Because we wanted that uh, project to be, uh, that concern, uh, that suspension uh, characterized that way is... Uh, it's not characterized all right, that's that way. That's suspension. Mr. Carmen, the HUD suspended this company all right. from that program. Well, let's get this is not an adjective, a verb, a noun that I invented. They were suspended. Well, they are currently under suspension. Where it you testified a moment ago that that suspension gives you lots of concerns. Kindly explain those well, we, concerns. We were ready to go to final closing and the IG held it up pending a, a, I guess, a conclusion or a solution of that suspension. What, in your understanding, does the Inspector General find problematical with respect to this mortgage? Uh, I understand that the, the problem is that the, uh, that uh, Benton, us, and HUD did the project according to the handbook and according to the rules, and uh, we think we did it, did it right, done it according to the rules. When the IG reviewed it, uh, he had a different way of interpreting and figuring it out, and uh, his conclusion was that uh, um, it didn't fit the, the uh, program which, we, which Benton had okayed it done under. And there was a $2 million difference. That's my understanding of the difference. Now, assuming that the Inspector General is correct, what will be the scenario unfolding with respect to this matter? We don't know. Have you discussed it with your... Uh, we've discussed partners. it among ourselves, we've discussed it with our attorney, uh, we've discussed it with Benton. Our feeling is that uh, everything that we did was appropriate, that it was done right, it was done under the okay of both Benton acting as a co-insurance for HUD, it was done under the people who were watching the project, and that um, we're being penalized after the fact, not before the fact. Uh, many of these problems, uh, if somebody just said early on, uh, hey, don't do it that way, we wouldn't have done it that way. The Inspector General's uh, conclusion is that Benton Mortgage inflated Pebble Creek's mortgage by $2 million to manipulate the rents and that the developers played a central role in all the projects co-insured by Benton Mortgage, audited by HUD. What's your comment on that, uh, Mr. Turner? Well, if I heard you right, you said the developer. I'll be happy to repeat it if the, you didn't. No, I think right. I'll, uh, developers, meaning the number, I think Benton has, what, four or five problems, I think, in that report? Uh, so, so that I know that we played no central role in their problem. In doing this project, you were the developer. Is that correct? That's correct. Why did you incorporate yourself separately also as a construction project? Uh, I, 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 I really, I'm not going to be answering those technical questions. I it's know It's not a technical question at all. It's a very clear, simple, and non-technical question. And I will be happy to answer it for you if you don't answer it for me, but you are under oath. Did you, in connection with this project, as a developer, also incorporate as a construction operation? I believe so. And why? I, I think that gave us the ability to manage the project or be a, be a, be a manager in the project. I, don't, I, I, I believe that's so. You do not think that that legal maneuver was so that an additional fee be received for the construction? I think that's what we get for managing it, yes. Could you have done that as a developer without a separate incorporation? Uh, I suppose so. Well, do you suppose oh, I, so? I, I, is I, the I, answer I, yes? Uh, I don't know. The, um, well, a contractor would have, would have bid well, that. W weren't you the general contractor? Yes, but I mean working with the contractor. So, but when they determined the total mortgage 
of eight million, it's based on whatever cost you put in as the general contractor. Is that not true? No, well, it has to be approved. If if, I, if my memory serves me right, every everything that the the architects do the the do the. Uh, uh, the requirements under, I think, the HUD we can't rule book. Mr. Uh, the no, the architects do the requirements under the HUD book, under the HUD rule book. Uh, it's pretty well specified what has to be done, and, and I think that's where the totals come from. But don't you understand my uh, ambivalence here? It seems to me that uh, you have a lot. Uh, the, the the greater the mortgage, the the better off you are for your rent subsidies. Isn't that correct? Uh, the, the higher the mortgage. I'm not sure whether the mortgage well, mortgage affects both, both the rent subsidy and, and I think the tax exactly. credit, credit, both of them. Yeah. So, so that has to be done within guidelines. I think that's the reason for the guidelines. Yeah. You just, um, I don't know if you want to ask anything in writing, but it just, uh, this is a very troubling aspect of this project. I would be glad to give you... Uh, uh, well, it becomes particularly troubling in terms of the earlier comment about the payroll slashing of which you were so proud. You were milking this program in many ways. You were milking it in terms of tax credits. You were milking it in terms of rent subsidies. Then you were milking it by establishing a fictitious little company, a construction company, which was you, which got an extra fee, which was built into the, into the cost. So, so the, the uh, comment of my distinguished colleague about a taxpayer ripoff, I think is an understatement. There was no reason to create this, this extra company uh, except to build another fee into this whole operation. I will provide the reasons in writing, uh, if I may, all right? And, 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 uh, I, it has I, never occurred to you until now. Uh, uh, I assume the the, uh, we've been working with accountants. We've I'm been, sorry, I can't. We've been you. working with accountants. We've been working with lawyers. I assume that what we've been doing, we've been doing it in accordance with accepted accounting practices and, and whatever any everything else anyone else does. I don't see it as a ripoff. I see it as just the economic process at work. Now I, I'm not going to. I mean, I will answer your question in writing and and, and, and be more uh, complete. Our chief counsel has a question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Carmen, you have referred to Pebble Creek as, quote, a winning project. Before the Mod Rehab program became a discretionary one, there were certain criteria in the selection process. Those criteria included the experience of the PHA in Mod Rehab, track record of the developer, and the need. Applying those criteria to this project, you had a PHA which had no experience whatsoever in the Mod Rehab program. You had a developer who this was their first foray into Mod Rehab. With respect to need, as Congressman Chase pointed out, there was a need. The need was for three bedroom apartments for families. Sixty percent of this complex is one bedroom. My question is, under whose criteria was this a winning project? Uh, I guess um, the criteria that I set when I made that remark was that uh, we had provided decent housing for poor people, so it wasn't as complicated as yours. But that's not in comparison to, say, uh, Congressman Wise's district in West Virginia, which did not get any mod rehab units. No, I, I'm not qualifying that way. But no. see, that's the whole purpose of the program, what HUD was supposed to do in making awards, is balance the needs, not just whether Arlington, Texas needs it, but how does that compare to the need of, say, West Virginia? And I think applying those and applying objective criteria, this was not a, quote, winning project. Well, counsel, um, I, again, uh, not to be combative or, or anything of that nature, be because I understand what you're saying, uh, you have to believe when you see the people living there, and if you ask them whether they thought they were the highest priority, I think they would tell you they were. But do you think they would tell you that they would be much happier in a oh, two-bedroom yes. apartment yes. than squeezed into a one-bedroom? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any additional statement you'd care to make, Ms. Carmen? No. On the basis of the document the subcommittee supplied to you that you express surprise and distress over, uh, do you believe that uh, your meeting with Secretary Pierce resulted in the awarding of these units to you? Um, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm sorry, I can't hear Mr. You. Chairman, um, 
I really don't want to say that, characterize it that way. Uh, I, I still don't know wh whether, whether there is, is any uh, action, so to speak, going on from the town of Arlington or, or, or uh, conversations or telephones that I'm not aware at. Uh, obviously, that, that, that uh, it was... Well, let me stipulate that yeah. if there are no uh, back-channel conversations between Secretary Pierce and the town, yeah. Do you accept the statement that these units were awarded on the basis of your meeting with Secretary Pierce uh, and your plea to him to award uh, these units? Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say that. Well, on what basis were these units awarded at the March two meeting? Uh, I I I just. I don't know what other basis it was beyond that, beyond my visit, uh, but I'm not, uh, I don't know whether there are any other activities. Well, let me repeat my question, yeah. Mr. Carmen. And I hope you listen carefully because otherwise I will direct you to answer the question, which I don't think is necessary. Assuming that there were no contacts between HUD Washington and the town of Arlington, on this project prior to your meeting with Secretary Pierce. Assuming that HUD Central found out about this project as a result of your meeting with the Secretary, who on the basis of this evidence directed either Ms. Dean or Mr. Demery to fund the project, is it reasonable to assume that your meeting with Mr. Pierce resulted in the units being awarded? Um, with those assumptions, uh, I would assume that the uh, Secretary uh, used his discretionary power and did exactly as you're suggesting. Well, I believe that is in fact what happened. Uh, I think it's important for you to realize, Ms. Carmen, that we consider you an, honor, uh, an honorable person. You have, uh, you have been very successful in the private sector. You have had high positions at GSA in our diplomatic service. And everybody wants to give you credit for your achievements. I don't think it is helpful either to you or to the process to have such a painful and difficult extraction of obvious facts during a congressional hearing. You could have said, what is obvious to everybody, that you went to see Mr. Pierce to have him approve this project, which in fact he did. The record is there for all to see. There's nothing illegal in it. Mr. Chairman. It was very highly, it was very highly questionable in terms of the established process. Because, as you know, the established process would have called for the Housing Authority to determine the need, which it did not, for the Housing Authority to apply, which it did not, the Housing Authority uh, to engage in bona fide advertising, which they surely did not, because they, they advertised in a, in a very small circulation paper when there were much larger circulation papers available. But, but, and I'm not commenting on Benton Mortgage and what will happen to the Inspector General's allegation that they inflated the mortgage by $2 million, because that can have, and I hope it will have if it's proven, ramifications all along the line. The fact is, the fact is, that this is the issue the subcommittee has been probing in various forms for, for months now. Influence peddling, special favors, far from having open access, incredibly restricted access, access to privileged individuals like yourself, like Ms. Hills, like Secretary Watt. These were the people who got in to see Pierce, these were the people who got favorable decisions from peers. Now, your decision may not be as expensive. We may use, lose a few million dollars on this, 
which is pretty bad, the DRG decision means that taxpayers are going to lose lots more money. So it's not the most egregious case of what uh, Mr. Shays calls taxpayer ripoff, but, but if in fact the Inspector General's <laughs> statement that the mortgage was bloated by $2 million proves out we are dealing with a taxpayer ripoff. In the case of Colonial House in Texas, you say, you, you, you try to give the impression that this is an honest <coughs> difference of views. With respect to Colonial House in Texas, a project you were not involved with, we had the hot career people <laughs> testifying that they thought the mortgage should have been in the neighborhood of 10, 11 million dollars. The bloated mortgage, in fact, was 47 plus million dollars. The project was sold for 9 million, so the taxpayer lost over 40 million dollars on that project. On this one, we may lose less than that. But I think self-righteousness is not called for in instances like that, and self-righteousness is particularly not called for when a child of six clearly sees that Sam Pierce, contrary to his earlier testimony, when he claimed he engaged in no funding decisions, did engage in a funding decision, here again, he made this decision because under oath you are telling me that Demery didn't do it for you, and Dean didn't do it for you. You didn't see them, you saw Pierce, and lo and behold, it happened. Well, lo and behold, it happened because Pierce made it happen. You went in, you asked him for a favor, and he complied. Those are the facts in this case. Now, nothing illegal, highly questionable, uh, highly undesirable, this is the sort of a thing that Jack Kemp is trying to prevent in the future, and we will do our best to help him. But I think it's important to, to, to sort of set the record straight. And I'm getting very tired of the repeated pleas which we heard verbatim from Jim Watt, who with uh, great self-righteousness said what a wonderful thing it is that he provided housing for, for poor people. No, he didn't. He provided himself with a fat fee for influence peddling. That's all he did. Had those funds not gone there, they would have gone elsewhere and they would have done more work, more useful things for people who desperately need housing. Those are the facts in this case. You're free to make any comment you would like, Mr. Conner. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I've, I kind of appreciated this hearing. It may be uh, the political kind of animal that I, that I really am. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to leave you with one thing because it I could walk out of here today and, and, uh, and um, understand what went on today, and, and you understand what went on today, and I don't think you're far from, from, from where you want to be. Um, I would like to leave you with one thought as far as me personally, that um, while I did go to Sam Pierce, uh, and it's a matter of record, uh, that I didn't ask for it the way you suggested I did. If you, How did you ask if, for if, it? If you knew me, you, you, just as I said previously, I went in and told them that the town of Arlington was coming in with a request, that, that I hoped it would get consideration, I thought it was going to be a good project, and, and, and when I said that, you're 90% you're right because I knew he would take, I would hope he would take concern on it, but I did think that there was some process there where, where if it was the best one or it was competing with the best one that we would have a chance to to win it okay that that it wasn't a case as you showed me today on what happened which frankly kinds of embarrasses me i think it's enough said on that because as far as i'm concerned because i think you've shown me something today that i didn't particularly like to see and i i appreciate that one thing that I would like to say before I leave here, which may be a little longer thing, but I'll, I'll shorten it, is because I do genuinely have an interest in housing I've had all my life uh, and have spent time in it in, in Manchester and in, in, in the state of New Hampshire, Washington, and uh, think a country that has 25% of its people are poorly housed and poorly fed and poorly uh, health care is not a, a very rational way to run a country. I've looked at the problem that you're that you've been exploring and, and, and watched it develop 
from a little different perspective, which is probably why I wasn't as well prepared as maybe I should have been in terms of numbers and things like that today. And what's occurred to me as, as I've watched it is many of the losses and the waste and, and, and that you've pointed out, and I'm not pinpointing it on, on consultants, I don't want to get into discussion of defending them and not defending them, is, is not really properly applied to a housing program that hasn't worked over 30 or 40 years and is more experimental than, than it is rigid the way HUD tries to do it or the way Congress tries to do it. And if we applied the same rules to housing as we apply to the Defense Department, for instance, in which you bring a B-1 bomber in uh, on stream or you start to experiment and develop it, and the cost overruns and the expenses go up and some, some weapon systems work and some weapon systems don't work and you, you try to go on to the best weapon system, that we have, if we had such a program, program with, with housing, we, we, would, we would all be discussing a different kind of thing rather than, rather than the, a concept which uh, uh, doesn't work. Uh, it, and let me wrap up by saying what I found the, the most appallable, uh, the, most, the worst part of public housing, if you want to call it that, is that we've now sanitized it with a word called affordable housing, which is all right for part of the unemployed segment. But when you start, uh, 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 or the un unhoused segment, but when you start to get down to where the people really have problems, 15 years ago, I went to a housing project in Manchester, New Hampshire that, that had a drug person supposedly selling drugs and threw him out of the housing authority when they told me I couldn't do it. I mean, laws and everything else, but he was disrupting a housing authority. I've, be I've been in authorities and, and in projects in which I know that 10% of the people, without going on a long time, can destroy a whole housing project. What, what I'm saying to you, that when an IG looks at the $28 million or the, the, the rent which they've allocated to what I would call a project that's going to be devoted to those who have real social problems, the reason these projects are not working and the reason they're failing is not because there's too much money in them, there's too little money in them. You cannot put just a roof over their head and a rug under their, their, their feet. You have to provide social services. Yeah, I mean, if we were going to run Pebble Creek correctly, we would have a, a, a social coordinator in every building. We would have a police officer or some kind of security in every building. We would have all kinds of assistance to those people that would have to be there or, the, or those projects themselves will not make it. And, and I, so I would just suggest to you that when you get through with the, those of us that haven't done things as, as well as we should have or haven't been as, as um, mindful maybe of some of the um, uh, things we, we, we should know, that I would, as you develop new housing uh, program, I, I think you ought to try to be very innovative and get off on a new track. That's all I'm saying. Well, I think it's very helpful and, and we appreciate it. And, uh, and, uh uh, we want to thank you for your appearance, Mr. Carmen. We, uh, um, uh, we are anxious to move on uh, to meeting the enormous housing needs in a manner that will be far more cost effective and which will exclude possibilities uh, uh, for abuse of one type uh, or another. Uh, this hearing is adjourned. concludes this hearing held to review alleged misconduct at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. A note to our viewers that later this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll bring you our series book notes featuring author Harrison Salisbury. He'll talk about his book, Tiananmen Diary, 13 Days in June. And stay with us now for remarks by President Bush to the Asian American Voters Coalition. C-SPAN is the cable industry's public affairs network. Since 1979, C-SPAN has provided nationwide audiences an insider's look at the democratic process.